Greetings from Fin Study Club. My name is Ankur Kulshreesht. Welcoming all viewers to a very interesting session of cash flow statement, which talks about the direct method of calculating cash flow from operations. This session forms part of your reading twenty seven, which is part of your financial reporting and analysis. Let's just try and understand what do we mean by the word direct method. Now, before getting into the details, the session will be useful only when we have done the basics of cash flow statement. So, the basics of cash flow statement was one of the videos that we had recorded before this. So, the video that we are going to do now is going to be helpful only when we have looked at the basics already. Now, if you have done the basics, you would be aware that there are three. sources of cash flows one is cash flow from operations investing and financing out of the three cash flow from operations can be prepared by the indirect method and by the direct method however the other two cfi and cff as they are you know more prominently called can be prepared only by the direct method so to speak if i were to look at the same scenario in a different manner your direct method can help you arrive at cfo cfi and cff whereas your indirect method can be helpful only in case of cfo so my focus of the current session is on the direct method let's just try and understand what do we really mean by something called as direct method as you you know would understand the direct method is a simple all straightforward way of doing a particular thing what i'm trying to say is if there are 100 or let's let's take a manageable number if there are 10 statements in a bank account 10 different cash flows how would you select you know which category uh, would have which statement so i'm going to like a attendance roll call i'm going to take names of each and every cash flow and try and allocate to one of the particular heads so let's say roll call 1 uh, it's operating go in that head roll call 2 you're financing go in that head uh, roll call 3 you are investing roll call 4 you are again operating Roll call four, five. You, so, point I'm driving home is there are ten students in a room. Each of those names will be called out, and they will be sent to different categories. Uh, you know, accordingly. The only challenge with the direct method is uh, while you are doing the operational cash flows. And why I say that is because if let us say there are hundred. cash flows in a for, for a company for a particular time period 95 of them is uh, operating and only 5 of them are generally uh, financing and investing put together so you know as as a matter of smartness it doesn't really make sense to for selection of this 95 to make the roll call for 95 i mean you can always do that by way of exclusion that you know you can just roll call for the non fine uh, uh, operational aspects and exclude them so this is something that will form genesis of my indirect method which i'm going to do next but right now i'm going to focus on the hard work so the way i understand direct method is a uh, direct method is a way where everyone tries to do things by hard work without putting a lot of mind the direct method generally is followed when you have information about all the cash flows which is there in your bank or cash account the ledger accounts that we are talking about now uh, let's say you know there is an uh, you know accessibility to a ledger account which has got different cash transactions so my one job is done that anything that i am looking at the canvas is anyways in a cash so the problem of accrual etc is anyways been solved now only thing that i got to do is you know call out the you know name for each of those uh, you know select the operational ones select the financial ones and the investment ones so uh, the operational ones typically which are the subject matter of the discussion right now uh, can be clubbed into the following transactions so let's say uh, you know operational is basically your day to day operations related to the you know main business activity and something incidental to that 
so you have cash collection from customer either uh, either in form of cash sales or in form of collection from uh, customers so which is like your credit collection in terms of the payment you can pay to your suppliers a uh, point to be noted uh, the the journal entry for purchase the transaction for purchase is something uh, different than cash payment to supplier so i am very categorically making that point that in cash flow statement you're going to look at the payment part cash paid for expenses you know all other aspects put together what is very very interesting to note here is this portion interest on loan uh, which you are aware that under the us cap your interest paid is part of cfo although ifrs gives you the flexibility to you know classify and categorize it under financing which is a more logical you know from the uh, perspective of of the reader also but uh, my us gap is very very you know abrupt in that sense and says that you know any interest paid on any kind of loan is is uh, operating although the us gap also category make uh, categorically make a point that the dividend paid is financing so you know we are going to come upon uh, that specific point in a separate session but right now the point is that you're going to look at this transaction only in case of us gap what is also categorically important from a us gap standpoint is that taxes paid in cash on all types of income is your us gap whereas ifrs says that uh, if you can specifically identify a particular tax with a particular income you got to categorize it accordingly so uh, you know the difference between the us gap and ifrs we're going to record in a separate session what i want you to deliberately ignore is this line and therefore i'm going to come back to it after doing a particular example now this is an example where different cash flows are given uh, that means bank statement is given and all we have to do is to calculate cfo by the direct method now like i had said there are so many inflows and outflows given point to be noted is the accrual has already been solved i am going to just call out the names of each one categorize them and then going to total them here so let me just start by uh, you know let's say it starts here Two and three. There are three inflows, so I'm going to, you know, read out and, uh, you know, classify them. So receipts from customer, purely operational. Issue of shares, purely financial. Sale of fixed assets, purely investment. In terms of the payment, you have payment to supplier, operational. Uh, payment for fixed assets, investment. Payment for overheads, your operational wages and salaries, operational. taxation again is operational i am assuming that i am unable to make any connect with any other kind of an income therefore entire taxes will go to my uh, operating activity dividend paid is financial and the bank loan repayments are also financial so this is really the direct method in its in its pure form where you are given a bank statement different cash flows are there and all you need to do is now to categorize and select the cfo so you have inflows is equal to uh 5566 you have outflows is equal to your 4094 plus 230 plus 138 here and 486 so by doing a quick maths we are able to get 4948 as the total outflow and your total inflow is 5566 the net result of that is 618 positive i'm sure this session will be more useful when you know you would sit with a working sheet and a piece of uh, you know pen or 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 a calculator along with the same question the same example can also be used to calculate cff and cfi so i'm going to go back to the previous categorization where now i'm going to focus my energy on cfi where the inflows were now let me use the correct signs the inflow were 256 and the outflows were 460 the purchase of fixed assets mm, and that's about it so 
effectively you have 204 negative the net outflow uh, is 204 and the last cash flow from financing uh, you can calculate by adding the inflows which is issue of shares and e subtracting the outflows which is dividend and also the bank loans so total is 660 therefore minus 60 so let's just quickly make a cash flow statement you have CFO coming as 618 positive you have CFI coming as minus 204 you have CFF coming as minus 60 now again using a beta 2 calculator your net result is uh, 354 in which this is your net flow in which when you add the opening balance which is right here 70 this is a positive flow by the way then you get something as a closing balance equal to 424 which is right here so I hope that the session was useful we would be very very happy to you know receive your queries any feedback any questions any problem that you have at the email id finstudyclub at the rate gmail.com and the subject matter shall revert accordingly this was Ankur Kulstresht from Finstudy Club thank you very much